as Valentine's Day is coming up, I've decided to design a card that I hope to put on my Etsy shop that I don't have yet, but I'm hoping to start one up soon. If you've watched any of my other videos, you know that I really love pangolins, and that goes with other weird looking animals like armadillos too. Me and my friend recently were arguing which one's cuter, an armadillo or a pangolin, but thinking about it, I think they're pretty much just as cute as each other. So here I'm just familiarising myself with what a pangolin looks like, even though it's not like I'm going to forget anytime soon. But it's always good to practice what you're about to draw before you do the big final project, just so it all runs a little bit smoother. And you might be wondering, why am I drawing armadillos and pangolins for a Valentine's Day card? Well, I had a really cute idea that a pangolin and an armadillo were in love, and I wanted some kind of quote about differences. So I actually used the first quote that I found on Google, which was, Despite their differences, they had one thing in common. They were crazy about each other. I just thought that was really funny, and I could imagine a really cute card with a pangolin and an armadillo gazing into each other's eyes or holding hands or something like that. I just thought it'd be really cute and funny. So now I'm drawing an armadillo and I really wasn't familiar with what an armadillo looks like. All I knew about was their weird shell thing on their back but I had no idea they had long tails and really nice big ears. I kind of get confused with anteaters and armadillos and pangolins. They all look pretty similar. So here I'm just noting down the quote and I've also drawn a little thumbnail of what I want it to look like and I do another one here. And I end up going with this composition because I think it's really cute that the pangolin's up a tree, it's kind of like Romeo and Juliet or Rapunzel or something like that. And I couldn't resist having them linking tails. It's really important to do thumbnails before you do the final image as well, just so you know what you're doing when you're coming to do the initial sketch because you don't want to be sorting out all the placements of everything when you're already quite far into the drawing because then making changes is really difficult. And as you can see, I've made the leaves a little heart shape because I thought that'd be really cute as well, having hearts throughout the image. And now I'm just using my thumbnail as a guide to start the initial sketch. And I always do my sketches so, so rough. Like you probably couldn't even tell what was going on in my thumbnail or my sketch right now. But it doesn't really matter what this looks like. It's just getting the shapes in the right places and the proportions. You see, I changed the size of the armadillo quite a lot because it ended up being quite stubby and big. And here I'm just writing down the text so I know where everything goes. And of course the main colour palette is reds and pinks for this image, for that traditional Valentine's look. Originally when I thought of doing this card, I wanted to do the line work with real pencil texture so I would draw it on a piece of paper, scan it in and then use the line work like that and colour it digitally. I decided against that purely out of laziness 
I really do want to experiment with real pencil textures though because I think it brings so much more to an image that digital brushes on Procreate just can't do. So like every image, the first thing I do after the sketch is just fill in the flat shapes. And here I'm just working out what tones will look best. And even though it was a really limited colour palette, I still wanted a bit of variety and it was really hard to decide what tones went where. And I ended up having more purpley tones towards the bottom and pinker tones towards the top. And my go-to way to balance the colours out is just to take little bits of colour and spread it around the image. So I've got little purple leaves at the top and little red leaves at the bottom just to even out the image a bit. It instantly got so much better when I changed the line work to red as well. I really don't like black line work just because I feel like it doesn't feel part of the image, it feels like something that's just laid on top. One of my favourite parts of an image is probably just adding the texture and the little, just little details like the coloured scales on the armadillo's back and little scribbly shading here and there. And you may have noticed I've put really subtle hearts in other places, not just the leaves. So I've put suggestive heart shapes on the trees and on the armadillo's back as his tiny spots. And even on the pangolin, I've made the scales kind of the top of the heart shape, just because I thought this was a really cute idea. I decided to get rid of the line work on the tree. I don't know if that was the right choice, but I just thought it would bring a little bit more interest to the image. The reason I have a little bit of a problem with it is just because it's quite a similar colour to the pangolin, so I don't know if it stands out too well. To stop everything from looking too flat, I just add little pencil scribbles here and there and subtle hearts that don't have line work. Because I've learned that any detail that isn't instantly obvious doesn't mean it's not important for the image. So you can look at an image and miss quite a few things, but if those things weren't there, it would look pretty boring and flat and you wouldn't know why. So I guess that's why I like adding tiny details, because it feels kind of easy just to make an image more interesting but with not too much pressure. And it also allows me to do a little bit more of that colour spreading out. So I've, I've brought the colour from the tree and the red at the bottom. Again, it just evens out the image a bit. And something so simple as having the leaves overlap the border just brings a lot of interest to the image. Like it would be a lot more boring if the image was just a normal rectangle on the page compared to what it is now. And to the straight pink edge, I just made it a little bit softer so it matched the rest of the image. In the background I decided to add really subtle light pink leaves because I thought this joined the foreground to the pink rectangle at the back. And then it was time to write the text in a nice bright red. I used the same colour as the leaves in the background to line behind the text just to make it stand out a little bit more and I also did a little bit of decoration behind the word crazy just to emphasise it. Mm -hmm. 
and here is the finished design. So I tried printing this card with my own printer and it was really, really bad quality. Like all the colours just merged into one. It was like a just a muted pinkish mess. So I ended up going back to printer.com like I used for my business cards because I knew that they had a really nice printing quality. And I got these red envelopes from Amazon. And I also got some plastic pockets from Amazon, but they were too big, it just looked a bit stupid. So, so I had to buy some smaller ones instead, so it just looked a bit more compact. I wanted these to look as professional as possible because it's my first item I'm selling on Etsy. So it's gotta look good. So all five of my lucky subscribers, you can go over to my Etsy shop and get yourself a nice animal Valentine's card. You're welcome. Okay, bye.